Yeah, Ubuntu is great, but another cool new distro is quietly gaining a lot of popularity with advanced and intermediate Linux users. Long time Linux users are switching to it in droves and this distro is so good that it's actually quite surprising that it's not even more popular. Archcraft is an arch based distro that's loaded with mind blowing features. One thing that I absolutely loved about this distro is how well executed it is, how polished everything in it is. The looks, the user experience, the performance, the performance is something to be talked about here. After watching this video, if your current operating system starts feeling a bit dull in front of Archcraft, well, yeah, let's jump right in. 3 reasons Archcraft is killing it. Starting off with the user interface, I found the design language very interesting. There's a clean background image, a top panel with various elements and a bottom dock. The top panel looks really colorful. I haven't seen a panel like this on any other Linux distro. Let's explore this. Clicking here brings up the menu. We don't get a drop down menu here, but we get Rofi, which is a very powerful launcher. You can scroll and find the apps that you need here, or you can start typing, which is the intended way of using Rofi. Most of us open applications by either pinning them somewhere like a dock or the panel, or by directly searching for them in the menu. We don't generally browse the menu categories to open apps. I really like this here. This launcher is going to alter the way you work, but after a couple of days, you will get a hang of it. You can also run commands from here, and Rofi also comes with a full blown file manager. It's powerful, but still simple to use. Then we get workspace indicators here. You can either scroll here or directly click on the dots to switch workspaces. Then we get indicators that show CPU usage, RAM usage, and storage usage. Archcraft on idle was using around 700 MBs of RAM on my setup. Now there is high fidelity screen recording running, so it's going to be higher. Moving on, we have a clock here. Clicking on it toggles it to a calendar and back. This is cool. More distros should do this. I don't need a calendar all the time, but yeah, I do need it. Then we have a music player. If you just click on play, it will start playing music from your music folder. The songs preloaded here have a chill smooth vibe to them. I felt that the developer not only has a strong skill for creating UIs, but also a knack for creating ambiances. Then we have volume controls here. Clicking on it mutes and unmutes it, and you can scroll on it to adjust the volume level. I think this is for brightness control. Then we have Wi-Fi settings, battery controls, and power menu. Right clicking on the desktop brings up this menu. This menu lets you get to anything you want on this computer. You have your applications organized into different categories, a super useful screenshot and screen recorder. You can browse the file manager and settings. One cool thing that I haven't seen anywhere is when you open the right click menu on XFC or LXD distros, the subsequent menu elements close off when you move the cursor away from them. But here, the menu stays on. This might be a very little thing, but it really makes a big difference. It removes that sense of urgency or precision needed to work with this menu. And look at how good the menu looks. The fonts, the spacing, the icons, that tiny bit of margin makes a difference here. Then there's a dock on the bottom of the screen. The smooth pop-up animations. Your running apps and favorites will be displayed here. By the way, did I tell you that this is the open box window manager? Yup, this is not GNOME, this is not a modified cinnamon. The developer took open box and made it look like this. Openbox is a super lightweight window manager built for performance only. At the same time, it's also highly configurable, but it can be a lot of work to tweak it. If you like this desktop and felt that Archcraft looks great out of the box, then you're in for a big surprise. Yeah, there's more here. You can just right click, go to preferences and change the style. And you have 10 themes here. This completely changes the theme, the icons, the background and how the menu looks. Is this cool or what? Look at the icons here. This looks so cozy. The hack style nails it. Absolutely nails it. It looks exactly like the windows used in Hollywood hacking scenes. Manhattan's pretty cool too. For all of you who prefer to use a light theme, slime is what you should be using. It feels like I'm staring at a headlight in the night, but still, it's well done. Changing the style doesn't just change the wallpaper and the theme. It changes the entire desktop making it feel like you're using a completely different system. Each of these styles is extremely polished, with so much work put into making them. They do maintain a general workflow of Archcraft, but each style brings its own identity. By the way, if you haven't already, 
check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Archcraft is a lean system that's built for efficiency. How it really stands out from other performance-oriented distros like Xubuntu or Ubuntu Mate is, Archcraft optimizes in both directions, performance and that user experience. Just because it's a lightweight distro, Archcraft doesn't look like it came straight out of the 90s. As you just saw, it holds up with modern desktops like GNOME and KDE Plasma in the looks department, if not surpass them. But Archcraft is using the Openbox window manager here. And Openbox is as lightweight as you can go. It's even lighter than XFCE. Yeah, let that sink in. Openbox needs ridiculously low amounts of RAM and CPU cycles to run. This efficiency frees up more system resources to be used by user applications and you get a very snappy experience. App opening, app switching, interacting with the OS, it's instantaneous. On idle, it was using just north of 600 MBs of RAM on my PC. You'll see a higher value here in this video because I'm recording the screen and it spikes up resource usage. Even the experience of using this system is very responsive. When you interact with the UI, it responds immediately. Archcraft feels very fluid. Archcraft comes preloaded with a performance-optimized software set. There's a very small number of software pre-installed here, but whatever was installed, they are lightweight variants. For example, we get the Tuna file manager here, which is very light and is specially designed to be used in lightweight systems. But Archcraft goes even lighter and installs the Ranger file manager here. This is cool. Ranger is a command line app that lets you browse around and work with files in the terminal itself. You just use the arrow keys to navigate the system. You can even play media from here. Press Ctrl plus C to exit media playback. This is cool, it's fun. Comparing it to my Ubuntu system on the same hardware, there is a noticeably large performance boost up with Archcraft. Of course, on heavier tasks like gaming, rendering and compiling, this difference may start to obscure. Talking about the system requirements, 1 gig of RAM and a CPU, any CPU, should be able to run Archcraft fine. Of course, you're gonna get better experience with better specs. All in all, Archcraft is a lean, mean performance beast. At the same time, it doesn't compromise on the looks and that modern aesthetic. This balance is very hard to achieve, but Archcraft gets there effortlessly. Archcraft, as I already said, is based on Arch Linux and this fact brings about some huge advantages to Archcraft users. First and the most important one being access to the latest and greatest of all the packages all the time. Arch Linux is a rolling release distro, meaning the same system gets updated continuously and you always have access to the latest software versions as soon as they are available. You don't have to use decade old packages like you have to on some other distros. No, as soon as the developer of a package releases a new version, it is immediately tested and pushed to its users on Arch Linux, consequently to Archcraft users as well. You always have access to the latest features, newest tech and all the innovations happening in the world. This is a very strong advantage for power users who want to play around with the newest of everything as you get all of this without having to rely on snaps or flat packs. While those unified packages do have their advantages, I for one prefer to use full native packages. And if you're like me and prefer to use native packages over unified packages and still want to access the latest of everything, Arch is the perfect system. It always has been. And the software repositories are huge. You can install anything and everything you want directly from the Arch Linux software repository. You name it, anything you want. You can install it with a single command here. Yeah, you have to use the terminal to install apps here. For some reason, a graphical software store is not provided on Archcraft. Something like the Pamac software store would fit in really nice here. You can install the Pamac software store using the commands given in the description below. But I would have liked it better if it was pre-installed. Then, you can use the Arch user repository here as well. The AUR is a community repository that has everything. Any software created for Linux will be available here, no questions asked. Even if something is not available in the official repositories, you can install it using the AUR. Arch user repository is the coolest thing ever and it's one of the biggest reasons I use Arch based distros. For me, it's really compelling. Another absolutely phenomenal thing about using Arch-based Linux distros is the availability of excellent documentation and community support. 
the ArchWiki is one of the most detailed and well-maintained Linux distro documentations. It has beginner-friendly and in-depth instructions for doing literally anything with Arch Linux. Troubleshooting, how-to guides, fixing bugs, you can get anything here. And the combined Arch Linux family community is big and highly active. You are using cutting-edge tech that may not be as stable as some other distros, but you are not alone on this journey. Any help you might need, any questions you might have is just a Google search away or a DuckDuckGo search away, whatever you use. DuckDuckGo is such a random name for a search website. It's catchy, but so, so random. As a kid, I was always more interested in opening up my toys and seeing what makes them work instead of actually playing with those toys. It's no wonder I use Linux. Arch Linux is particularly created for these kinds of people, the tinkerers, tweakers among us. Archcraft just builds on this base. All the advantages of Arch Linux are here, but it removes the intimidation factor that comes with Arch Linux. Archcraft lets you jump over to the Arch Linux world and then learn things at your own pace. Or you can just carry on with your work. Study, work, play on Archcraft. It's a good system. These three reasons make Archcraft an attractive choice for people who are exploring the world of Linux. People who want to try out new things here. This is not just attractive, this is alluring. But these same reasons can also deter Linux newcomers from Archcraft. Yeah, there is a way of using Archcraft and not everybody will be familiar with it. Even long-time Linux users who run GNOME or KD Plasma may need some time adjusting to Archcraft. And if you are absolutely new to Linux, I'd recommend you try out something like Ubuntu or Linux Mint first. Archcraft can stifle Linux newcomers. And I don't think that's the intended audience of Archcraft anyway. But if you are willing to give it time and learn the ways of Archcraft, you can load it as your second OS and use it till you get acclimated. The download link for Archcraft is given in the description below. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also turn on the notifications so that you're the first one to know when anything major happens in the world of Linux. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up too. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course, Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. By the way, Linux Mint 22 has rolled out and it's got some crazy new things going on. It's the next major release of the fan favorite Linux distro. I made a video on that, definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.